Recorded at Get a Grip Studios in Toronto, Canada. A Get a Grip management production and in association with the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Financially supported by the good folks at the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, this is Restoring Darkness podcast. This episode of Restoring Darkness is brought to you by Evluma. If you're serious about contributing to the reduction of light pollution, go to evluma.com, hover over products, and click on Dark Sky Friendly Lighting. Both the OmniMax and AreaMax lights are International Dark Sky Association certified. The warmer color temperatures of the OmniMax reduce the more easily scattered blue wavelengths, which contribute to glare and sky glow. With AreaMax lights, you get full cutoff, which also means no uplight and a significantly reduced contribution to sky glow. And all of Avluma's outdoor lighting product lines come with dimmable drivers for even more control. If your customer is looking for dark sky friendly fixtures with energy savings while still meeting the demands of decorative lighting, look no further than Evluma. Evluma, illuminating the pursuit of dark skies. Welcome back to the Restoring Darkness podcast. On today's show, we have Rayon Khan. Rayon is, a well res- is well respected in the industry and holds several prestigious titles, including International Astronomical Union IAU Dark Skies Ambassador, IDA Dark Sky Delegate, and National Coordinator of the Moon Village Association. He is also the Young Persons Committee Head of the Royal Aeronautical Society Pakistan Division and the International Astronomical Artists Director of STEAM Outreach. He is the founder of Cosmic Tribe, which is super exciting to talk about, and currently serves as the national node of the International Day of Light and the IAU NAEC National Astronomy Education Coordinator from Pakistan team. Um, he has his social media on the Restoring Darkness website. Welcome to the show, Rayon. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me on your show. I'm so happy and excited to be a part of this. Uh, and I'm excited <laughs> right now <laughs> so are we. For, for all this work that you're doing, specifically uh, re- related to dark sky. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, Ryan, um, Michael's handed the the baton over to me to kick this one off. Um, I usually talk when I, you know, when I'm talking lighting design and and talking with 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 clients and talking with manufacturers. You know, the usual analogy for me is you take a jigsaw puzzle, and you and you haven't started it yet. So there's a thousand disparate disparate pieces on the table, and mm. you pick one up. Yeah. And looking at your CV, looking at what you're up to, I feel as if I've got a jigsaw puzzle and I go, which one, which one shall I start with? Because he's mm. doing this and he's doing that. You're, the, I've got on my screen here, bridging the next generation to the cosmos. You said that because it's on yes. your LinkedIn site. So you must have said it. Yeah. So yes. the one thing that we talk about all the time, really, the thing that, that you that really digs deep into this whole topic is that thing about connection the bridge from the people who know the people who care and the people who we feel need to know need to care mm-hmm. because change needs to happen mm-hmm. now i'm interested in 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 what how you how did you get started in all that what you know, who were those people was it the youngsters was it was it people like us who just wander around the streets in a daze and don't care about anything at all what started you? Well, okay, this is an interesting question. Uh, the way I started, I used to work for airline before, and uh, before doing all these work, I was working as an aircraft maintenance assistant engineer, uh, engineer as an in, in an airline, and I started a very different career. Like I did my apprentices apprenticeship, and I, then I got my aircraft maintenance license. Later on, I decided that this field is kind of stagnant and I'm living my life in a uniform but uh, from my my activities that I do the way I think it was not something which belongs from a uniform uh, background which looks like that I'm uh, um, I'm I was thinking uh, that this career is quite stagnant for me and I want to change it uh, later on I started my studies back again after eight years of gap and I choose a space science it was a uh, a good decision 
and I wasn't uh, very well aware of what is uh, in cosmology, what is in astronomy. Slowly and gradually, when I started studying all these things beyond the, uh, what you say, aerospace uh, horizon from the air, uh, aviation perspective, looking from another uh, perspective of cosmology or astronomy, that actually changed the whole uh, idea of life itself. And then I started talking about the cosmos and cosmic tribe. That's how cosmic tribe started. And, and I realized I live in a society where a lot of people are actually unaware of such kind of topic. And uh, there should be a language to communicate. And it was a hard message initially because um, I was talking very scientific. <laughs> I was uh, using very, uh, uh, what you say, technical jargons. And, and I realized it's not the right audience, mm -hmm. maybe, or maybe I'm not communicating in a right way. I need to connect with the people. I need to talk in their language. And it's really hard sometimes when you talk about such language and the language I figured out, it's a universal language of art. And from there, from that point, I start using art in my outreach and awareness activities that I do. I I started wearing costume from an airline background to <laughs> wearing a costume in a public space is a big uh, challenge for sure. Because I was so passionate to talk about this topic that, oh, Pakistan is a is filled with dark sky. Look at this. It is is a real hard message when we have a lot of different issues related to uh, political, economical, many different issues that we have right now. But talking about this, it's it's like a, a going against. And I'm, as you may know, that I live in a city of lights, Karachi. It's famous as city of lights. It's always uh, twenty four seven. It's it's light lighting everywhere, it's, and nobody care about all these things. Like, okay, what does uh, what is why it is so important for me when I lived my whole life here in this city of city of lights, and why you are so passionate about this then i somehow feel that because of my proactive uh uh learning that i did in my aviation career like before arriving the aircraft you have to prepare the aircraft everything before and that oh uh, there is a maintenance coming in that you have to prepare all the tools all the things that al uh, already uh, captain has informed you before landing on the airport so the same thing i felt in this Field, mm -hmm. that uh, this the 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 chaos has not arrived yet which is there mm -hmm. in the US and Europe which which is light polluted and Pakistan is still dark dark mm -hmm. sky country or it has a lot of darkness in itself yeah. why not to protect it as a sure. proactive and take it as a proactive approach Love it. so so that's okay. how i started talking about this okay this was my mission i, like, I realized I, I lo yeah i and i love this idea that it's almost the engineer inside you works out yes. the, the works out the planning for the art to move forward mm. so you you're a crazy mm, yes. guy in a suit fantastic <laughs> but a crazy guy in a suit with some ideas mm -hmm. and some plans was it at that point that you decided to go into to the schools Is, was it the case of get, get the youngsters and get them early uh well um I started uh, reaching out to people through outreach activities, I would say. And uh, let's, like I completed my master's degree in astrophysics, uh, which gives me a complete direction itself, like uh, from aerospace to the astrophysics or from aerospace to the outer space, it's a journey, a uh, journey to the cosmos, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> I love yes, that. It's a journey. Uh, so I felt that, okay, not only me, why not to create a bridge and bridge is, is through the language of art and everybody should get engaged because, uh, when you talk about space science and astronomy, space is for everybody and space is for all, not just like from someone who is studying astrophysics or is specifically interested in space. But I feel every, every human on this planet earth has some sort of curiosity built in that what is there out there what is out there mm -hmm. what is, why mm -hmm. we are here for and this is a real thing that i felt that if you put a seed in a young brain a young child or um 
which can spark. And I felt that when I started teaching or doing STEM activities with students from very early age group, like, like from six to 10 or 12, when I talk about cosmology or space science or astronomy with them, like galaxies, stars, nebulas, uh, like <laughs> it's just a, a spark that I create and everybody is like, now I feel like their parents are always talking to me and saying that, oh, they're always watching something on TV, which is related to space science. And I feel like, mm. oh, I got, <laughs> I did my part now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I had yes. plans to become an astronomer when I was about 10 years old, mm. when I just, <laughs> when I discovered the planets, you know, and moons. Wow. What a wonderful, wonderful. But then again, gonna, at some point I was going to be an, I'm gonna I was jump be an archeologist here. as well. Come wanna, on in, Michael. Come I want to, I want to just make a point though, about, about astronomy. I feel like, part of our issue is we need to recapture this away from astronomy a little bit because my my feeling is i feel like you know while i've been to various observatories and looked through telescopes and seen the moons of jupiter and all sort of stuff when i look through a telescope i see these little dots like i see jupiter there and there's this dot right or whatever it doesn't give you the grand scope of the cosmos though it's when you're lying under the stars and you have no other equipment, maybe a set of binoculars or something like that that you put off and on and you look. It's the scope of the horizon in a dark sky environment that is really gorgeous beyond imagination. And I find at times when we over-focus on astronomy, Rayanne, we lose the connection to the, the actual a uh, horizon to horizon effect of a dark sky, like in a provincial park in Ontario or something like that, where you look in all three directions and there's darkness above the tree lines and the stars just go from horizon to horizon and there's the Milky Way laid out in front of you. So I think we need to be careful a little bit, Rayon, that we don't go too far with the astronomy. I'm trying to take it back from astronomers a little bit and give it back to the people. Yes. Um, well, um, I totally agree with you on this. Uh, when uh, you talk about so much technical jargon i feel it's mm -hmm. always uh it's it's not so much uh everybody is interested in i felt and from all these outreach activity when i do there should be a storytelling mm -hmm. like i i yes. created my yes. story about dark sky superhero wearing a costume <laughs> <laughs> wearing a super uh, like a superhero costume in public space talking about this as a light pollution fighter and a story should be there and the way I uh, like the way I do is almost using no technical word for a student to understand this. Mm -hmm. Why it is so important? It should feel from like, don't you think it's important for you to sleep at night? Yes, it should be like this. <laughs> well, you know, technical uh, jargon is a way to discriminate. Like a lot of people don't recognize that. But when we're, when we're using technical jargon in an industry or in any place, what we're trying to do is create a hierarchy of understanding. I know more than you and you don't know enough yet because you don't know how to speak the language of this particular topic. I find technical jargon to be very discriminating. I don't mean that in the way of the other. I'm just talking about human to human, not racial or anything yes. like that. I'm talking about it discriminates against those without knowledge. And we don't need that in this issue. Let me ask you something else about Pakistan. Does, does the issue now... You know, we understand Pakistan's a developing nation, okay? It has, like you mentioned, a lot of the political issues and how the dark sky issue is a non-political environmental issue that we can address. Yes. But does it feel a little bit conspicuous? Does it feel a little bit kind of like, it, you know, we have other things to worry about? Because sometimes it feels that way here in the West. I know, I know John's brought it up a couple times that, you know, people think there's other things that are more important. And I actually don't believe there is. And I'm saying that with all truth. How do we get over that? Is it an issue in Pakistan where people are hungry? There's instability in the politics. There's rolling blackouts. People just wish the lights were on or they could turn them on and they can't. How do we get over that sort of conspicuous nature of this issue? Okay, this is a very good question because um, to talk about this or uh, to deal with this kind of topic, I think education is one of the important factor like it's not just about uh protecting the dark sky or talking about the night sky but it's mm -hmm. also about the education uh i think there is a missing gap what i feel education not related to space science but to general education like why it is so important to be 
an eco-friendly country or to to work in this way that oh we got everything here <laughs> we have everything here we just need to understand that how you can deal with the situation uh, this is what i feel most of the time uh, when i talk uh, in public about this kind of issue like okay uh, why it is so important right now for example uh, let me give you uh, an idea about this topic how it created an impact through the work that I did in uh, last year. Um, uh, that was all about like, uh, I worked with another visual artist and we created uh, costumes that was inspired by biodiversity. And it was addressing how light pollution is affecting biodiversity, their physiological effects of, uh, their, their, like how light pollution is affecting physiological effects of light pollution on such species like bats, moth, translating through an art performance like there was an art performance which was done on on uh, like uh, in a in a public space but it was mm -hmm. a uh, like a big hall and we used tech in the costume which was mimicking the same physiological effect for example we we use ldr sensors uh, we use ultrasonic sensors we use servo motors and created a whole mechanism which was mimicking the same phenomena like as you see a moth get uh, mesmerized by the light so when it, so it was a public interactive uh, performance people were using their smartphones torches to interact with the sentience and the pro, uh, the project name was sentience of light uh, in that case i felt that everybody was engaged from a kid from six year old he was playing with the sentient like performer and disturbing and see what is going on with this torch. Uh, I feel that uh, when you start making things easier or talking about such kind of issue through a different perspective, from a different perspective, for example, as you mentioned it earlier, that uh, it's, it's all about the education, I would say. Uh, when you start educating people about such thing, uh, such kind of topics for example this is i feel uh quite complex sometimes because uh from from those activists who are working in in climate industry specifically in pakistan they were somehow unaware of it mm -hmm. which i felt surprising because uh this topic is not globally uh studied i i i feel from 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 those who were addressing and they mm -hmm. realize okay to reaching out to them uh for me uh, even to them was a challenge for me because yeah it's not it's not taken seriously as an environmental issue john it's just not taken seriously yes. as an environmental issue i mean no well that's that's exactly where we're at and and i think some of the distance is I, michael what you what you're saying is that the more technical a topic becomes the less connected we mm. we, we uh, are to it which is why the storytelling is so important mm -hmm. Um, you know, and yes. I, I know where, that you know, if I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm lucky enough to live in the country, so I'm lucky enough to get a decent nighttime sky. And I know that when I look up at the stars, I'm looking for the constellations. I'm looking for mm -hmm. the stories. I'm looking for Orion. You know, I'm mm. looking for the Big Dipper. Yes. I'm looking for Leo, mm -hmm. because because behind there, there is there are the myths, there are mm -hmm. the stories, and and you learn that this is not a static ceiling of stars that it depends mm -hmm. what time of year you're gonna you, i'm now gonna have to wait another 12 months before i see orion you know oh mm -hmm. and the cry goes up this is a terrible thing ah but there'll be someone else along in a minute mm -hmm. so the story book of the stars mm -hmm. which we forget to tell because we'll you know like the astronomer and you go jupiter is really big and it's red <laughs> and you go yeah okay oh, thanks very yes. much for that is, is, is that it? I'll, I'll just go and play it. Thank you. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go and put a little bit of music. I've got a bit of music on and I'm going, ooh, that's Jupiter, that's Jupiter. But sh the storybook is in the sky. And if we can't see that, there's our tragedy. But there's our connection. There's our lack of connection. Yes. Uh, and I felt uh, from our ancestors, uh, everybody mm -hmm. has a story connected to the cosmos. Why Everyone. don't we have stories All connected cultures. to All of them, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yes, everybody. And I felt there is a missing connection between the dark sky and the storytelling. There's so many stories mm -hmm. like I started wearing costume. This is one story, then created an art performance that created another story with six sentience 
wearing different costumes, mimicking different effects, created another story, mm -hmm. a performance. We need such kind of storytelling, which can resonate with the with the normal, like a uh, layman, <laughs> which can understand or it, which can connect with them. Like, oh, okay, now we have another story. We need more stories like this and something which is more scientific and translating yeah. into streaming. What I feel is streaming, like uh, it was a complete streaming project, like science, technology, research, engineering, arts and maths, streaming into the future is important. Mm -hmm. and streaming about this topic is so important about well, think the about the sky. understanding if you take a look at the archaeology of a place like malta for example okay so the island of malta i think there's seven or eight temples that are built on malta i don't know if they're five thousand or however old they, they are but this culture continued to build these temples over and over again so that it would align with sirius the star sirius so that the entrance of this um this temple would be built so that the, it lined up perfectly with the star Sirius and the earth wobbles every 70 years and Sirius would adjust over. And so they would build a new temple. Like that's yeah. it. That's like you, if you look at the, the, all these temples on Malta are kind of all just adjusted like this all over the island so that Sirius rises right into the, the entrance of the temple. Think about the mathematics involved in that and the megaliths and the stones they moved in order to, yes. you talk about your performance or the creation of art. Like our ancestors were completely dedicated to the, to the stars and the cosmos. I would say that every single building, every monolith, everything that was created in the past prior to the invention of electric light was somehow oriented to the equinox, to the, the, the procession of the sun or to the procession of the cosmos, or both, one or the other. Well, and it, it's really yes. a, unbelievable that we've abandoned this. Well, we abandoned it because we invented the clock. <laughs> you know, and, and now we've got oh, clocks, that, yes. so we can we can count down in seconds. <laughs> we we yeah. you know, this is not. I mean, yeah, from 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 Stonehenge and all of those things, all those beautiful things that we've got here. A hundred and odd years ago, Isambard Kingdom Brunel was mm. building the great western railway between london and bristol and there is a thing called the box tunnel there's a village called box and there's a tunnel just by the village nothing different in that it's just a tunnel through a hill except sunrise when the sun rises and it, the sun shines down through that tunnel that's brunel's birthday okay that's mm. how he designed it you know, wow. so and, and that once a year and there you go. And we, it's the only time we had to ever really get to celebrate sort of astral events. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it is yes. it is that idea that on that because that day is special to me, not be, not because it's my birthday. That's what's special about it. But our ancestors, you know, and, and we still talk about the snow moon or the winter moon or all those. And yeah. why? Because that's what the Chinese or the Native Americans or the, the, the farmers in what Pakistan was 2000 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was their timepiece. Yes. That was their yeah. clock. And that's the link that we would, if you know, we talk about you know, slow, slow things down, slow design, give things mm. time, give things True. their time. Mm. Well, and build things with beauty. Time. Build things with beauty Always. at the center of it. Always. Like the, 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 there's this lack of beauty in our culture that it, it, I'm talking about enduring beauty, not the latest fad, you know, not Ikea, nice, nice table. I'm talking about enduring beautiful pieces that our ancestors created. I want to ask you a little bit here, Rayan, about this, this leapfrog effect that we see in developing nations. So Kenya invented a, a payment system that was used on non-smartphones, I think in 2006 or um, I can't remember what it's called, but they, they used to be able to text money to each other before anyone could do e-transfers or anything like that. And then the farmers were looking at the prices of, um, of their fish at the market and all that on old prior to smartphone phones and so you see this leapfrog effect where they actually beat us to it and then you have you know in bangladesh you have microfinance created and now you see microfinance yes. on amazon you can buy that thing for 10 bucks and pay for it a dollar 25 a month for 10 months or something like this and then you so you have this leapfrog effect do you think that it, we can reach the developing nations before they create light pollution so they don't have to address it later 
I think uh, if we do it collectively, definitely, definitely, it is, uh, there is a possibility. There is a possibility. I feel. Well, how I feel I, I because was... um, there is a language barrier. I feel somehow. Mm. Uh, yes, language is one of the barrier because it's a two uh, two hundred and twenty million people living over here in mm -hmm. Pakistan, and almost forty percent cannot read and write. But they can see the stars. They can yes, see the stars. They can see the stars. Yes. Yeah. Yes. See, see, I, I was, I was actually, Mike. I was going to go the, the exact opposite direction to what you just said. That, <laughs> yeah, that can, yeah, can, can, can basically, can Pakistan save itself from us? Yeah, there you which go. Which is what you just said. Can, <laughs> can the developing, can the developing world save itself from the developed world? Unfortunately, um, you know, the, the politics of envy. Of, of being part and also mm. the politics let, let's not forget this the the, the the politics the politics of acculturation you know, it, our culture matters your culture doesn't matter that that has been the way of the western world mm. for the last 200 300 500 years that has been but the way of the I world was, not the western world. okay that's been, been the way of the world it's been the, the, the people who've got the biggest gun the biggest sword the biggest sure. ship the biggest whatever it is but i was going to say i i wonder here round whether we've actually got the the potential for the opposite mm -hmm. that pakistan and the work that you're doing can be translate can be transmitted not translated can be transmitted into the heart of london or into the heart of toronto mm. or into the heart of new york mm. because it's a universal story mm -hmm. yes i think it's interesting come on over perspective <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because I mean, so, basically, um, the, the, the problem, sorry, just the problem we've got is that we've lost it. We've lost it. We, we have no even, connection. We, 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 Nobody the, has a the connection. The connection's gone. Yep. You know, people will say, we're not, we can only see 250 stars next year. We'll only be seeing you know, 100 stars. And all of those stories are going on. And you know, yeah, but if you go around the world, they haven't yes. reached that stage yet. You, you can see the problem, but generally out there, it is so much better. Why don't we, for once in our lives, learn from someone else and haul it back. Sorry, I, was, I interrupted you there, but I just wanted to I think uh, there is a possibility. Yes, there is a possibility. Everything is possible for sure. For example, uh, it's a matter, it's a, just a matter of conveying and convincing people in their language. And I think uh, that's the, uh, that's, uh, that's an important thing. For example, I always say that we are living and and sleeping under the dark sky, <laughs> literally, because uh, it's all dark. When you just visit some remote areas in Pakistan, even uh, if you forget about the main mega cities from Pakistan, you are going to see complete darkness, dark sky. Uh, and I have experienced myself, like uh, from Balochistan to the northern areas of Pakistan, they all are like so dark, so good, so, uh, so many stars that you can see. But the the only thing that I found missing was the education, like educating about this topic itself. And and I still remember when I was a kid, my one of my uh, auntie actually, she used to tell stories about the stars, and uh, that is something which I can still remember. Okay, uh, yes, okay, Th that sort of stories are missing now because we are just focusing on the capitalism about making money about even we are uh, living in under the dark sky and we are just engaged so much with the with our smartphones like because this is kind of a, uh, a, uh, which is an advancement at the same time um, at the same time through this channel we can educate I feel there are so many things uh, there are so many possibilities yes and, and not to, not to go down the road of capitalism or anything like that but I'll tell you this that's a very problematic. And that is that one of the symbols of the success, and I'm making quotations in the air for those listening to this, of an economy is how much light pollution they produce. Okay? So people will yeah. take, you'll see pictures of North Korea and South Korea, and they'll say, look how much more successful South Korea is. Look at all the light pollution. Right? And so in a way, light pollution has become a symbol of success. 
it, you know, it, like if 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 Karachi were to do all new five thousand k lights everywhere, and I'm sure they already have them in Karachi, but if some of these areas, they would say we have lit up our city, and everyone's so much happier now with all this light pollution. And I think that's the what you're talking about when 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 Rayon's talking about education is that light pollution in 2023 creating it does not signify success. It signifies failure, Rayon. It signifies failure. Yeah. If you're creating light pollution, you're creating failure. John wants to come in. What do you got, John? <laughs> that, well, um, that, yes, it's it is. It's the the problem is that we've got this little this well, no this very very big label called light pollution, mm -hmm. and it, to me one of one of the issues that we have is that we don't really know where to where to hang that label and why we're hanging it what we're talking about is the is the simple glory of living on a ball of rock that spins very very mm. quickly around around the around that space and we say this is all of what we are mm -hmm. so all of those stars belong to us because they are part of our stories and they're part of our history mm -hmm. and if you say to most people they'll say uh i can look at them on my smartphone because i've got huh. pictures of yeah. Consulate, you know, that's fine. And, 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 hey, and I, can, I can watch the tele, I can watch films, I can, I, can watch, I can watch Star Trek, you know, I can do all of those things. Also, if I've got if I've got light, I can see to walk around my city safely. Oh. Yes. And then if you go out to the out to the villages, now, I mean, we, we've we've had that those stories about the, the, the ability of solar power to come in and transform children's um, uh, adult expectations because solar power has given them the power to be able to read books and to write essays and do all the things they need to do in a place which has no electricity otherwise. But, but John, we don't need to create light pollution, even if we have electric light that we need. I, I know, but it's, and, and there's, but there's the thing that we have to learn, isn't it? Is we've forgotten that Our, you know, in the West, in the North, Northwest, we've forgotten that. But what the opportunity that we have is that if we look at a country like Pakistan, which has embraced Western culture, because that's what Karachi looks like. Yes. But that's when true. you say now, now what we can do is that we, we, as it starts to go out like this, we have to be very careful what we do. And we must not imagine that Karachi there is the same as Pakistan there, that there has to be a line that is drawn in is a, 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 um, a comparison in Ireland, in the centre of Ireland, there's an area called the Gale Tact, and in the Gale Tact, I Gaelic is the is the primary language, and it's protected by law. And we have this, we have a similar thing in Wales that people are trying to protect the Welsh language. It's about protecting things that some people will go. I have no idea why you want to do that, because the world speaks English. So why do you want to speak the same language that your granddad spoke? And you say, because there's magic in that language. Mm. Because in the country, there's magic in those fields. There's magic in those skies. But and that's the word. I'm telling Ryan. I'm telling you what to do, which is crazy because uh. it's meant to be the other way round. Yes. But that surely yes. that that is that is the job. It's the, it's the one that says you take the city people by the hand and you take them out into the country and you go. You don't have to lose any of this. If we're very careful. Yes. Yes. Uh, exactly. You're right. Uh, for example, the way I talk to kids that you are blessed. Yeah. You are you are living. You are blessed. And uh, when you see around, for example, you have got everything from minerals, from mountains to the lakes, to the night sky specifically. Because when I start talking about how it is affecting the West, and give them an example like people who are living in a very remote areas like Balochistan. I was doing an outreach session with them and I said, you guys are so lucky. You have no idea what uh, other people have, have already done with themselves, the pollution, which is uh, we don't have yet. Uh, mm. it's, it's one kind of information that you, you must understand and protect it. And I think uh, starting from the early age, that is what my goal is starting from the early age talking about this topic in different languages in their own languages through storytelling mm -hmm. through through art <laughs> through the, because this is one of the easiest thing 
if nobody is going to understand any technical jargon or scientific word, they're going to understand the story. They're going to mm-hmm. understand the body language. Mm-hmm. They will understand some of it, uh, not completely, but some of it. Definitely, it's going to create an impact. Uh, and definitely, it's a debatable topic when you talk about the success through light pollution or mm-hmm. uh, development through light pollution. It's mm-hmm. very uh, debatable. And, and I think um, what we can do is to think from research perspective, those who are developing or working in this domain specifically about creating more lights because um, you may see that uh, light is become becoming so cheap that everybody can afford it now mm-hmm. yep. light is so affordable that everybody can even living in a remote areas like i went to i went to a star party that was organized by private observatory in pakistan in balochistan so just near to that place there was a hotel uh uh, uh like uh, a restaurant maybe uh it was but it was completely bright with mm. white lights and it was like oh i traveled so far for this and it's just near <laughs> next mm. nobody cares about this and i i felt so bad at the same time like oh we traveled so far but for and from that point from that restaurant uh we further go two three kilometers away to be in the dark sky zone which was bottle scale one spot at mm. Taqwa Observatory, it was a beautiful experience for sure. But at the same time, I felt like it's all just about matter of uh, counseling, education. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, yeah. Reaching out to people, reaching out, talk to them, <laughs> because uh, maybe they don't know or they don't care or do, they don't understand. And connection, how you are going to make connection? For example, uh, there are so many indigenous community in Pakistan. I got to know that they feel that this light can they feel that this light can cause harm in their body mm-hmm. they don't turn it on <laughs> sure. and there must be so many uh, indigenous communities who right. so feel this way that this they're right yes they're uh, they connect with this energy <laughs> yeah no uh, they're somehow 100% they right. feel yeah they, they couldn't yes, be more and right. it's scientifically proven as well yes yeah uh, it, for sure light pollution causes cancer obesity depression all these if you find if you try to research and you find it yes that, they're right but at the same time, they're so they have their own indigenous knowledge or understanding about all these uh, technology, or somehow they feel that it is kind of creating some harm in their body or their mm-hmm. uh, eyes, specifically. They feel if that they believe it, it, it's not good. true. If they believe yes. that, it's true. Like it, the, the one of the, there's this argument I often see where you know you'll see like. Um, uh, Australia to incorporate indigenous knowledge into the STEM fields or whatever. And then there's these arguments between science is this and da 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 da. But the, the point being is that people have a right to their heritage and their knowledge. Okay. And whether or not, you know, Western peoples or any people, Chinese people or any people from any place comes in and says, you're wrong and we're right. Anytime that there is coercion or duress, placed upon indigenous peoples for their knowledge. Now, I'm not saying that that's equivalent to a double blind study or whatever, but certainly they have a right and and we have an obligation to understand their that where they're coming from. And if the, if these indigenous people feel like that the light is hurting them, they are correct. We are not going No, 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 no. They don't know what they're talking about. What you need is electric light so you can be safe. Actually, maybe we are wrong. You know? Maybe it's the other way around. You know, maybe our, uh, the, 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 the science, maybe the science is wrong, actually. Um, <laughs> you know, and so uh, um, I wanted to ask you, though, uh, John, go ahead. No, I, th- I was just going to pick up on that, that it's not only with in- indigenous peoples a- a- away from the center of so-called civilization. Um, this is something I'm involved in at the moment, and that is, is, is about the effect of light on people who live in care homes and trying to get circadian sure. lighting in, in, into a building where people don't spend any real time out, outside. Now, the science is, uh, is, is very little because they've only been, the scientists have only been looking at this for the last 25 we're, we're years. We're just really. fish figuring out we're but, in water. That's where we're at right but now. They, what, but, what they, but what you will hear is that there is no scientific proof, which suggests that it doesn't exist. But I, Whereas, I hate that straw man. I hate that straw man. No, no, straw no, I man. Know you do, I know you do. That, 
Well, that straw man always says, no, no, you prove to me that I'm wrong, as opposed to him proving that yes. he's right. Well, what, what's happening here, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, this is something I'm really happy about, is that is there seems to be a shift to this thing that we're calling evidence-based design. Mm-hmm. And it's not scientific-based design. Mm. My client, who owns the care homes and manages the care homes, is turning around to the scientists. When the scientists are saying, we can't prove this, he's saying, I don't care because mm-hmm. I know it works. Sure. And how do I know it works? Because I look at my people and I see that they're happy. It's at that point where you go, we need an emotion meter. You know, we, 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 need, a, sure. we need a branch of science that doesn't exist yet. And Rayon, we're going to go back and, to, and, I'll tell you yes. what it is. Rayon, like, listen, John, yes. if you've ever been involved in the creation of an academic study, okay, which I have, yes. okay, on lighting, you see how limited it is. It's ridiculously expensive. And the amount of people they can run through these programs is very limited. And that the, the question they're trying to answer is super tight and in a very small space. And they have to control for all this stuff. There's no gut instinct. There's no anecdote. There's nothing. And so they, they come up with some kind of answer to some very, very specific question, which does not incorporate very many factors and is not a, a representative of real life. Rayon, we're coming up on 40 minutes here. I want to ask you about money. Is there any money in Pakistan to go towards this type of awareness creation and type of this type of education for people? Um, well, I think there, uh, yes, as I did project, that was a national project that I did uh, that was part of Karachi Art Benale. And uh, it reach, reaches up to 1 million people more than that. I don't remember, but it was a like, uh, like there were 26 artists from all over the world participated and Cosmic Tribe actually won that art performance award last wow. year. Wow, fantastic. And I felt that there is a possibility in this domain itself that uh, these uh, red areas like regional economical development areas of Pakistan, which are like in, in dark, dark sky or darkness can be uh, can be uh, can be work as a uh, work for this monetary benefits or can be helpful if we do it through ecotourism or a dark sky tourism or educational activities there is a there is a potential waiting for it i feel and specifically those who are living in such remote areas create a, a platform for them and give mm. them uh, support where they can mm. just like you mentioned about the Kenya give them a tool to give them a possibility to a possibility to host people who are traveling on in these areas and and give yeah. them education about gastronomy astronomy altogether mm. create a curriculum design based on this it's going to be helpful for sure and I think uh, not just into this and we have to think collectively what I feel mm-hmm. always that uh, there should be a collective imagination uh, when you talk about the lighting design, about the education, about this complex topic itself, which is which has connected with so many things, like from uh, astronomy, astronomical perspective, from lighting design, from scientific, from psychology, from many other topics. It is connected to many, so many domains because it's a pollution which is affecting everything, like mm-hmm. the whole ecosystem. So I think uh, the curriculum should be based on on collective imagination, collective work of all these experts from the, the research field. And definitely, there, uh, I, I think it's uh, like uh, I'm, I have started working on another project for this year, which is based on the sleep and art and artificial light at night. So mm. I think <laughs> things can work. Uh, if, yes. if you're if you're if you're expanding um, the the topic, and you're now looking at sleep, sleep is a problem for adults. Illness is a problem for adults. Does that mean that you're able to extend the story to say so, you know that you it's, it's that whole thing? You can win the kids, and the kids will have that information for their lives. But the parents and the grandparents, they're either lost to us because it's too late or we have to find something they care about 
it sounds like this is one of those ways forward of saying this is about you now we maybe maybe we won't be talking about uh constellations but we will talk about your sleep health and how well you yes. sleep yeah and 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 how you should be yes. a, a better way of eating a better way of living so that's that sounds terrific yes. as as a, as an expansionary process yes and i feel every uh, a person do not care about anything but care about himself or herself <laughs> i think if you talk about person specifically it is affecting you think mm -hmm. about yourself yeah yeah, it, yeah. It, people Let will me... start thinking about this one more one more question i think and um and, and we'll comment on that and then maybe we'll close it out but how much money is in pakistan sloshing around from ngos non-governmental organizations related to climate change how much money is in pakistan okay. and then and by comparison how much is there for darkness restoration is it like a thousand okay, to one um, a million to one <laughs> okay i think um First, awareness, which is still not there yet, because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time. Even though I'm connected with the no, no, no. What I'm asking, no, what I'm, yes. what I'm, a, what I'm yes. asking you is, is there a lot of foreign non-governmental organizations working in Pakistan yes. right now to mitigate climate change? Is there a lot of those organizations in Pakistan mm -hmm. right now? Because of the last year, a lot of organization has started for sure because of the flood. Right. That happened yeah. last year. Yeah. <laughs> that if was we could biggest, get some uh, of that money, if we mm -hmm. could convince those NGOs that this is an environmental issue and it contributes yes. to climate change mitigation. So the number one thing the world can do right now to mitigate climate change, not to create clean energy, but to, as a mitigation, is to ensure that all lighting is dark sky friendly or dark is, is in line with darkness restoration and preservation. If we can do that, that those climate change folks, they need to learn about this issue, Rayan, because if they learn about this issue, they yes. will embrace it as a, a, the number one mitigation. You do not want that hotel sending wasted lumens projecting across out to the universe forever and wrecking your dark sky. They need to be. They need to be on board. The hotel, get them on board with the saying. Look, this is a dark access to a dark sky preserve. You want to be in line with that. You want people to come and visit. You know this kind of thing. Can we get any of that money, Ryan? Um, <laughs> possibilities are there. Yes, <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a hard yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, there is a possibility. Yes, it's a, it's possible. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I, I think we, yes. We, we've had com we've had conversations um, on these podcasts before about how big a project this can be. Yes, and one one of the issues is always this is enormous. It's mm -hmm. so big. Mm -hmm. You can say, okay, so how do you actually do it? How do you make a difference? And it seems that it has to come down to a discrete project, and it's almost like you've got a hotel that's too bright. You have to go knock on their door. <laughs> and say, we'd like to show a different way of doing this. Mm -hmm. Convincing because and if, persuading. If, convincing, convinc and persuade. convince and persuade. Because yeah. if we can get, if we can get the, the hotel and the restaurant owners to understand that there is money to be mm -hmm. made by doing something differently, and mm -hmm. it's doing it from a design perspective and from an art perspective, mm -hmm. then there is no coercion. Yes. There is no big authoritarian stick, of which there is plenty in your part of the world you know? but if you can actually get people saying i did it because it was a good idea yeah and people good for love business it. people come at me and i, th and I think in that business. respect michael <laughs> it's, it's, it's not in that in that you know if you can yes. if you can start to move it that way then you're not looking for government money yes at, particularly at, at a time when the government is saying do you not understand that a third of our country is underwater and we've got more <laughs> more important things to worry Seriously. about in fact you want to see the stars go out and get in a boat and there's, you know, there's a third of the country that hasn't got any power. Um, yes. There are ways that we can, I think there are ways that we can move this thing forward. And that's the, mm. that's the, 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 the wonder of the work that you're doing because you're showing those possibilities. That's terrific. I, I'm, I'm so chuffed uh, I, with what you're doing. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan though, but think, final, final thoughts for the listeners. We're coming up on 50 minutes. So final thoughts for the Restoring Darkness sure. listeners. Sure. Uh, I think possibilities are there. And talk 
with the universal language about this topic specifically and i think th this is a real real uh, issue we all need to understand that dark sky is for all <laughs> dark sky is for everybody uh that's it that's uh, and for that's everything um uh, mm, yes well, Makes folks, you, if you made it to the end here with John, Rayanne, and myself, we <laughs> definitely appreciate you. Um, we thank you for listening. And, of course, um, you know, you can go to the Restoring Darkness podcast website, click on the merch, and you can buy yourself a little Restoring Darkness shirt. We'll ship it to you or hat or something like that. But for now, <laughs> folks, thanks for listening. Bye for now. Look no further for dark sky friendly products than Evluma. Since its first product launch, Evluma has carried one or more International Dark Sky Association certified models. If your customer cares about light pollution, suggest the Omnimax with shielding or the Area Max with full cutoff to reduce uplight and glare. Evluma, illuminating the pursuit of darkness.